Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church and our online worship experience. We have a live experience every Sunday morning at 1030. The service is pre-recorded for predictability's sake, but a live experience available on both Facebook and our YouTube channel. We are here this morning again at the Visitor Center at uh, Hills and Dales and we're grateful to Carlton Wood and the staff there for making us feel so at home uh, in the process of recording this here in this beautiful grove uh, just down from the house and across from the Visitor Center. We begin our service today with a parish prayer. God of all, gracious and loving, we thank you for the diversity of your creation. Give us wisdom and strength to know your voice in the midst of the noise all around, so that we might see and serve you in one another and in our common life. Amen. We begin on page two, the front inside cover of the bulletin. That bulletin is emailed out to you with a reminder of where to find the service every Sunday morning at 7.30. If you'd like to be part of that email list, go to stmarkslg.org slash connect. Send out your light and truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm is the Vanity, found at the bottom of page two. Let us say it together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are his people the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm of the day is portions of Psalm 69 found at the top of page three. Let us say it together. Surely for your sake, I have suffered reproach and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up the scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Our first reading is from the Book of Romans and is offered by Lector Ginger Zachary. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, 
so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified to him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, offered by Martin Zachary. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of his house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear for them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. And whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, for a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter that more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who, those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. I apologize for the sudden change in location. No, I am not trying to run away from the very difficult gospel reading that Martin just did for us. 
Um, in fact, I recorded at Hills and Dales and most of the service was just fine, but the sermon got very, very windy. I thought it was more of a distraction for uh, me to play that windy sermon that was hard to listen to rather than to come and have a sudden change of scenery. Um, it was tempting to run away given the reading that Martin did, especially because today is Father's Day and all those words about sons and fathers and being driven apart. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is not the first time that this reading has come up on Father's Day in my preaching career. It's funny what God can do to you. So anyway, here we are, and following the sermon, you will see me return to my previous location. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. We believe. We believe that God came to live in a particular time and a particular place with particular problems. I don't usually like to talk about very particular problems from this pulpit because my very particular problems are often nothing like your very particular problems. But today, I want to say up front that we all, every single one of us, we all face the very particular problem of racism. Yes, this problem is worldwide and pervasive. Yes, we have been facing this problem since the inception of our country and for 150 years before that. Yes, many of us, many of you, have already done diligent and heart-rending work around the racist ideas that we can all sometimes promulgate. But we cannot allow those overwhelming and dispiriting facts to keep us from examining the ways in which we face that problem today that sin of racism here and now in this moment. I wonder, I invite you to wonder, what does it feel like to be black in the United States, in Georgia, in LaGrange? I don't have an answer. But it's one of the only questions worth asking right now. Almost four weeks ago, a man named George Floyd was killed by a police officer in Minneapolis. That seems so far away from us. Over 1,100 miles, no matter how you slice it. But but just over a hundred miles down the road from Minneapolis sits the little town of Winona, Minnesota. The town where our stained glass is being restored, even as we go about our pandemic altered lives. Nothing, nothing is very far away. None of us are very far away from each other. Not in God's world. Another way to ask our question, to confront the sin of racism, is to wonder, do black lives matter? Mattering is a pretty low bar. That's the floor height on being allowed to exist. When you rifle through your junk drawer looking at old mementos, you ask yourself before tossing something in the trash, does, does this matter to me? Do black lives matter? 
Some will respond by interjecting that all lives matter. Yes, that, that is the goal. That is where we want to set the floor height. But until black lives matter, then it remains impossible to say with a straight face that all lives matter. And one day, one day when we get beyond just mattering, perhaps we can move along to say that we are all beloved children of God. One day. Today, today Jesus says to us, a disciple is not above the teacher. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher. We are Christians. We know that we ought to be like Jesus as much as we can, especially as we engage the problems and immorality of our world. As the church, we are not invited to be above the fray. Difficult as it surely is, uncomfortable as it surely is, we are commanded to be down in the muck, down in the gritty reality of our world, down in the ditch like the Samaritan, caring for our wounded neighbor that we find along the way. Why can't we be above the fray? Because a disciple is not above the teacher, and Jesus was not above the fray. They don't persecute people and murder people in a public execution on a cross in front of their mama for being above the fray. We talk about Jesus loving, forgiving, and healing, and thank God all of that is right. That is a good way to talk about the work of Jesus, how he engaged with the world. But our bishop, Bishop Wright, has another good way of talking about how Jesus engaged with the world. He says that Jesus was always political, but never partisan. It was inherently political for Jesus to turn over the tables in the temple. We know that. But it was also political for Jesus to take 5,000 some odd people, sit them down, and start saying to them, blessed are the poor, before taking a few loaves of bread and just a couple of fish and saying, there's enough for everybody. The gospel is inherently political, but never partisan. There is plenty of sin to go around for every party under heaven. Jesus doesn't care about our political parties. He just cares that we put the gospel at the center of our lives. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What is at the center of of our lives? Is it the gospel? Or is it anything else in all creation? Don't get me wrong, I have never much liked that line from Jesus about mother and father and son and daughter. It's hard to hear, but it is a good reminder. If we were looking for a way out, Jesus, Jesus leaves us none. If we ever go looking for anything that we can love more than the gospel, we are reminded today that there is nothing, not even something as good and holy as parent and child. To borrow another phrase from Bishop Wright, the love of God refuses any competitors. 
It's not a competition. God sees no competition between love of neighbor and love of self and love of God. All love returns to its source, the almighty love of God. And that kind of love, genuine love, it is an undefended love, a love that is open and curious about the wisdom and the pain of the other. That is gospel love. That is the love to which Jesus calls us. But he doesn't say it as nicely as all that. Jesus says, whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Take up the cross. We all know where Jesus wound up with his cross. Completely undefended. Completely vulnerable. What does it take to follow Jesus? To take up our cross, to be vulnerable, to be undefended. What, what shape will our lives take? Vulnerable or defended? What shape will our conversations take? over these next years and months, our conversations about race and privilege and our history, 401 years ago, 30 years ago, four weeks ago, and the history we are choosing to make every day of our lives. How will that conversation go? Vulnerable or Defended. We, we believe, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, God from God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. We believe that God was born in a particular time and a particular place with particular problems. And we believe that he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. He will come again. Always, world without end, come again to our particular time and our particular place and our particular problems. He will come again. And his kingdom, his kingdom will have no end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Good morning again. A couple of announcements that we have today. First of all, um, this past week we had our bi-weekly Zoom call with the bishop and um, this, this particular week, they gave us the guidelines related to being able to regather in our church spaces. That is exciting news, but it is an awful lot of information to digest and an awful lot of, de of decisions that have to be made. And so um, a small group of the vestry is uh, taking a look at that, people on the vestry and, and not on the vestry taking a look, uh, and then they'll take some recommendations to the vestry uh, themselves who will make some decisions in early July about what that will look like. But for those who um, will remain uncomfortable, that is perfectly understandable, not wanting to come in uh, and be gathered with a crowd. Um, we all understand that and we support that. 
and I want to let you know that our online offerings will not diminish and we're going to find ways to have in-person uh, offerings that are um, in tandem with and go along with our online offerings so that we can offer that in-person safe in-person experience um, the health and well-being of all members of um, God's family which is all of us uh, is the primary responsibility of the bishop myself and the vestry and so we take those things seriously and as we look at reopening that is our primary task is to stay uh, healthy and safe and just to let you know we will um, be sure to continue these online offerings for those who want to continue that until such time as there's greater comfort with joining together in crowds um, the other announcement is about joining together and it is next next week is the last wednesday of june and we're going to be doing our saint mark social hour after the wednesday night service again we did that at the end of may we're going to do that here again at the end of june and we'll continue to offer that at least monthly, perhaps more often if there is a request for that. We had a great group of people last time, and I look forward to that. There's information that went out about that in this past week's Thursday email. And uh, just to let you know, you will also get information about that in uh, this coming Wednesday's email. There'll be a Zoom link sent out at 1.30 on uh, Wednesday afternoon to point you both to the service and to the St. Mark's Social Hour afterwards. Again, it's an informal time of conversation and gathering and uh, we wrap up by about 6 30. offer to god a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high <laughs> Lord be with you and also with you let us pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, creator of all that is good and gracious and true, we give you thanks that we are able to offer to you out of the abundance you provide. Bless our offerings to the glory of your name that is love and faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in in you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Today our prayers are offered by Ruth West. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for all members of God's Holy Church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob and Dan, our bishops, for Alan, our rector, for all bishops and other ministers, for St. Mark's Kindergarten, Kim Davison, director, and all students, 
teachers, assistants, parents, and board members, for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, Donald, our president, Brian, our governor, Jim, our mayor, and our county commissioners and city councilors. We pray for all those working to relieve the suffering, fear, and anxiety caused by this pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers, cashiers, restaurant workers, and others we name silently or aloud. We pray for all those who have suffered loss or grief during this pandemic. We pray for those who have lost a loved one, those who are isolated, workers and business owners struggling to stay afloat, and others we name silently or aloud. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, Beverly, Elaine, Bob, Kathy, Owen, Anne, Clark, Julie, Sue, Lee, Marshall, Scott, Marshall the third, Annie, Peggy and family, Logan, Larry, Jan, Gib, and all others we now name silently or aloud. We pray for those who have died, especially those we name silently or aloud. We give thanks for those having birthdays this week. Todd, Hilda, Jonathan, Sherry, Janice, Sadie, and Addie. We give thanks for those celebrating anniversaries this week. John and Annabelle. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the holy body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Blessings and have a good day. Next skin, nice. It's still recording. You want to show it? Oh, God.